Hey guys and girls, this is Gordon Overkill. I am about to record the third episode of Ratatorn's Great Adventures with the new Adom version. Before we start, I have got again a couple of things to say. First thing, I thought a little about the way how I moderate this uh, series and I think at the moment I do it in a way uh, as if my audience were people who already knew the older Adam versions and to whom I now mainly explain the differences in the new versions. I'm not quite sure if that's the case for all of you guys because in the Adam Resurrection campaign um, one of the goals is to reach maybe a couple new players who are not yet familiar with the game but who likes how it looks and sounds and so on and now want to play it. So if you guys like me to explain a little more about a third, certain theme, why I do something, how I do something, whatever you'd like to know, feel free to ask in the comments or on the Adam forum or wherever you want and I will do my best to, uh, to explain it. Anyway, I will uh, maybe give a short description of what uh, Ratatorden did so far. Well, in the beginning there are certain different options that you have to start the game in order to make your first levels and get your character a little, star, uh, a little uh, tougher and, uh, and with better chances of survival. And uh, with this special character I choose the path through the small cave and unremarkable dungeon. This is actually quite a dangerous path because uh, the small cave spawns monsters always twice the level of your own. So uh, the quicker you level, um, twice as quick the monsters level, that becomes a very deadly place uh, after a very short time. That's also why I did not want to uh, move uh, one stair up from the, from, from the unremarkable dungeon level when I was surrounded by the blink dogs in the last episode. Well, it's a very deadly level, but on the other hand, in the Unremarkable Dungeon there is an increased chance of finding special dungeon features like uh, pools or shops or walls or whatever. So if you have got a strong character and he is able to, to do this path, chances are good that he will get a, a real boost for his development in this dungeon. Another reason why I choose this path is because Ratatorten already started with the healing skill. If he had not got the healing skill from the very beginning, I would have, uh, I would have tried to go to another dungeon first in order to get this spell. Well, in the last episode you saw that uh, more than half of the episode was filled with a fight of Ratatorden against Blink Dogs. That was a dangerous fight. He had to use a prayer. He was always at low hit points. The reason was told to me later on the on the Adam forum. Um, as it seems, Blink Dogs were buffed in this version. They are a lot stronger than I, than I, uh, uh, than, than they used to be in the versions I played before. And that's what I recognized. They were very, very hard to kill. On the other hand, I'm happy that uh, that Ratatorn made it in the end because he got a corpse and ate this corpse because Blink Dog corpses give you teleport control. So if you teleport to a certain place now, you can choose where you want to teleport to. You saw that when uh, Ratatorden used the teleport trap a level deeper. Anyway, that's why he walked around until the Blink Dogs used their special um, um, duplicating ability and, and, and increased their number so uh, the chances grew that he uh, found this corpse. Anyway, that's why Ratatorden is where he is now. Uh, another thing that I wanted to say, I made a mistake with deleting this uh, certain config files that I told you about in the last episode. I hope that I have been able to do it now and uh, that we will be able to see the new bloody features and colored messages and all those uh, the stuff in this episode. So let us now start our uh, adventures for today. So wait, restore. Ratatorden, level 9, Rattling Duelist. So here he is. And uh, one more thing I wanted to change, which is the scroll option. Still I can scroll with the mouse and I think that is maybe a, a little annoying. So I will try to turn that off. I have got uh, some explanations how that works. I first go to the graphical mode. Uh, then configure animations and scrolling which is the C button and here we've got manual scrolling speed which is already at 100 at the moment we want to change that to zero enter to submit escape to channel tap to erase and scroll the map how can I reduce it now 
No, no. Ah, I can just erase it and press the zero here. So that should be nice. Let's see. Yes, we cannot move it anymore. And in order to keep it so, so also for future episodes, I will save the settings. Where did that work? Um. Mm, not quite sure. Maybe I have to save it here with S. Save save changes to config ADOM. So maybe so it works. Anyway, now we can continue our adventures. Remember, Ratatorden is on the on the fifth level of the uh, unremarkable dungeon. He has already found some herbs down here, which he can maybe use later when he obtained the herbalism skill. And. Uh, but there are still a couple levels left to explore, and that's what he is going to do right now. So... This door is stuck. You can open stuck doors with uh, a couple of attempts. What's this? Oh! A neutrally aligned altar! That's amazing. That's one of these special dungeon features. And a neutral altar allows Ratatorden to uh, um, ask a favor of his deity, which in this case is to identify all the it the status, if they are cursed, uncursed or blessed of all his items. So at first I close the door so nobody dis uh, disturbs him. Then I unequip all the equipment that he is currently wearing. Step onto the altar and drop it. There is a special command that I use therefore, which is at first double point shift point makes the double point then D and that brings me to this drop all menu and I want to drop not all items that I possess well actually I want but if I already had some uh, identified status items that would not be necessary so I just drop all items with uh, with unknown status and therefore we've got the shortcut um, dollar I press the dollar sign and now I drop everything that I have onto this altar. Because I do not want to pick everything up at once, see I could do it with a comma, pick up command that I usually use, but that takes a long time. I do not want to do this, so I press semicolon, shift and comma. And afterwards, uh, big Y. So I have to pla do just uh, one click and I've uh, picked up everything. Nice. So let us check what we have. The armor is uncursed. Girl 2. Cloaks anchors. Weapons. Let us just equip the other weapons. Wow! And this is a scimitar of penetration. What a great weapon! Penetrating weapons are able to bypass the enemy's protection value, no matter how high it is. That's a great weapon. Of course, from now on, Ratatorn is going to wear uh, to wield this weapon. Another thing that I was really happy about, by the way, is the fact that uh, in the last episode... Oh, he's got a glowing ring. Should we try it? We try it. It's not doomed, cool. In the last episode, uh, Ratatorden already found one of the new items, which was the saber. That's why I was not so uh, familiar with the weight of the saber, because there were no sabers in previous Adam versions. The sabers came into the game completely new. Anyway, now we have already made some very nice progress. We have uh, identified the status of all of uh, Ratatorden's items. And we have uh, equipped a new, very, very strong weapon. <coughs> well, what happened now? Where is he? Ah! And this is a ghost bat. That's why this bat can stand in the wall. But I want to kill it outside the wall to make it a little easier to pick up the loot if he should drop something. A red dog? This is a hellhound. You have to take care of its fiery breath. Oh, and by the way, you see the blood splattered on the ground? I think now I did it right with the, with the config file. This huge badge drops a corpse. And there comes a bugbear. So does the bugbear lo look. Ah. That's interesting. I always thought they were kind of bears. Bug bear, a bear that eats bugs. 
There is a certain kind of bear that eats ants that I know. And I thought these were these ant eating bears. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> these are worms again. White worms. We already met some of them. They also have got this uh, replicating ability and uh, uh, but we do not want them to uh, replicate. Oh no. It's a karmic lizard again. Maybe we can once again outrun him. Take this with us. Oh no, we are burned. We do not want to be burned. Um, what can we drop? Do not need this cloak of adornment. I can also drop maybe some burst weapons. Orcish knife, we do surely not need it. And the hand axe. Let's see if that's enough yet. Yeah. Can we now outrun him and get out of here? How quick is he? Let's take a look. He's got an average speed of 91 to 102. We have got a speed at the moment of... Wait. Of 93 because we are bloated. Okay, maybe we are not able to outrun him right now. Let us see if we can maybe kill him with thrown rocks. Slightly injured. We hit him. Moderately. Wow, that works. That's not bad. And we've got a couple of rocks with us. Well, okay, now we stopped hurting him. Okay. Can we apply first aid once? Uh, where is it? Here. No. Anyway, by now we've got a very good supply of food. So uh, the fear that I had within the last episode that maybe hunger became an issue for Ratatorden in this game is uh, uh, not uh, there anymore, at least at the moment. So, we're already done with this level. Maybe there is some secret uh, room. Oh yeah, there is one. I forgot the door. I saw the door on the minimap. Stupid me. Come on. Yeah, where is he? Cannot see him. Ah, that's cool. I can use the minimap. Oh, no. Not right now. I just used the minimap to get to. Uh, to get to this place of the map. Courage Lark Orc Corpse. Uh, we're still burned. I do not want to pick corpses up. This is spider, right? A large spider. Spiders could poison us and we're not yet poison resistant. So we do this carefully in defensive mode. The imp is not so dangerous of course. But the spider... It would be great if the spider would maybe... No, it does not. However, if the spider had dropped a corpse for us, we would have loved to eat this corpse because thus you are able to get intrinsic poison resistance. Uh huh. That's a sheaf chain, it's a goblin sheaf chain. And by the way, I was already complaining about oh the barbarian leader. Let's see how we do this. Oh he oh, 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 oh take care. Kill him, yeah. Female large cobalt. Large cobalt also can do some damage. Okay. Hmm. Uh, before I forget it, what I want to say. Um, damn, I already forgot it. What the fuck? However, <laughs> not thinking about it anymore. I'd like to drop some more stuff in order to reduce our weight, the weight of our equipment. What can we drop here? Hmm. I will just check the morning star, maybe it's, uh, if it's just an ordinary morning star, which it is, then we will drop this one because it weights a lot, 175 stones. So we get back to uh, unburdened status, which is a big advantage for Padulis, as we already learned. Hmm. So here we go. Next 
level. We're down at 37 HP. I think now with the health ba health bars visible, it uh, stays very more present in your mind how low your HP actually are. Who's that? That looks like some jellies. Gray ooze. Gray ooze. Or oh, green slime. These guys are able to replicate. And gray oozes are actually very dangerous opponents. I have to think how we work. How oh, that will best be done. Definitely we will change our weapon because if I'm not totally wrong, grey oozes are not so good for your weapon. So maybe I could use uh, the saber here. We've got two sabers but one is a lot better than the other one. Let's start with the bad one. Oh uh, yeah, your saber corrodes. That's what I mean. They uh are made of uh, acidic fluids that destroy your weapons. So that corrodes again. See, uh, when we started, the saber did 1d6 plus th two points of damage. Now it does 1d6 minus three points of damage. Anyway, we use it until it gets completely destroyed. <coughs> I'd like to continue training the sword skill because see, uh, Ratatorten already has swords at level 7. As long as it takes him to train his uh, his uh, ranged weapon skills, as quick he is for training his one-handed weapon skills. And that's of course a big advantage. Okay, we get hit by this ooze. Oh, the saber is almost not usable. Oh, fuck, 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 fuck. Retreat, retreat, retreat. Uh, we do not have... Come on. Close that door. Whew. That was close. We do not have a prayer anymore and we do not have any means of healing at the moment and I really do not like that. What could I do? Goblin rock thrower. Maybe I can lure him to the altar. Oh, I think the barbarian will kill him. Yeah, he has. The female raider shoots an arrow at me. He does not yet stand on the altar. I have to get to the altar and sacrifice this raider. Sacrificing by pressing shift O. Okay. Sasa seems to be pleased. I do not think that's enough. We already used up all our prayers, if you remember. And, uh... Okay, rattlings are not chaotic, I'm afraid. What kind of rattling is that? A rattling warrior. He can definitely harm us. Maybe the barbarian will help us once again? not oh he does nice come on barbarian kill him who will win this fight oh no the rattling one but we could kill him with throne rock I definitely want to sacrifice some more chaotic beings right now or maybe also some weapons this morning star can we sacrifice it Yeah, we could sacrifice it. So if we could now maybe sacrifice some more chaotic beings, we would get another prayer, which would enable us to uh, get our hit points back to a reasonable level. Oh, okay, this uh, Rosford is so destroyed that we cannot use it anymore. So I will sacrifice that one too. The saber, I mean. Minus 12. But he does not want it anymore. Uh, good, re good reason for that. It's maybe the worst saver ever on this planet now. So, who are you? Giant rat? Not what I was looking for. And that's. Giant lizard. Okay, this is a uh, rather tough opponent. 
but he is not hostile at the moment. Let's hope it stays that way. Okay, no, it doesn't. Let's maybe try to kill him in aggressive mode. Does that work? Come on, hit him. Oh no, oh no, that's too dangerous. Get away. But we cannot allow him to live so near to us that he will stand in our way when we try to lure our other enemies to the altar. No. Slightly injure him, maybe we can kill him over time this way. Oh man, that's dangerous. 15 HP and there comes the bandit, that's not good. Uh, let's see if we maybe already have a prayer. Oh yeah, we had one. Oh, that was lucky. Anyway, we oh, okay, that's why we did so little damage. We did not have a weapon equipped. Anyway, I'd like to lure this bandit to the altar and sacrifice him. So we maybe get another prayer for emergency situations in order to restore our hit points. Like I said, at the moment, prayers are the only means of healing that we possess. Come on. Follow me, bandit. I attacked him once in order to make him aggressive. That way he will follow me, okay? Come on. Here he comes. Now he retreats. Come on. Oh, oh he's dead. Fuck. Okay, he dropped the stuff that I dropped a while ago. Oh, fuck. Anyway, we, I think now we can kill them. They are, uh, you remember, there was just one single of these jellies which followed us to this episode and he replicated and duplicated. And now this uh, corridor was quite filled with them. I pick up those uh, bad weapons because I need them to kill the jellies. But they do a lot of damage. See, we're already back down to 65 HP. Uh, okay, not the not the cloak. It's also burdened at the moment, but that means we definitely need to have an emergency prayer when we get down there. Oh, tower shield. For most characters, that would have been a very nice finding. Not for him. Maybe we can sacrifice it. Yeah. But still the ground rumbles. Our deity is still not the best friend of ours. Here. You. That's a chaotic being, this orc. Is that an orc scorcher? Yeah, it is. That's one thing that I like very much about this tile set. Each uh, and every monster that i found so far has a very unique, distinguishable uh, look. So there is no risk to, uh, to, to mix them up. Uh, you take a look at them and you, you know what you are facing. I think that's very important, especially for these little tiles. Giant lizard. Anyway, I think uh, we should at least sacrifice one more chaotic being. Centipede. That's a Gelantino's cube. But they are all not, not chaotic, so I cannot use them for sacrificing. Whoa! We made another level. Just reached level 10. Let's see what we do with it. Which skills do we want to increase? Alertness. Detect item status. And find weakness. Just as a short explanation what they do. Alertness main function is that it allows the character to dodge the damage of traps and also uh, the damage of incoming bolt spells. Um, Detect item status uh, is the talent that makes uh, us already know the the status of an item when we uh, when we pick it up. Otherwise, we would need an altar or a scroll or something in that kind in order to identify the status of the item. And find weakness allows us to bypass the enemy's protection. No, 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 not not that. It allows us to increase the chance of uh, hitting a critical hit, which uh, does double damage. 
those are some very useful talent. Okay, here we've got a griffin. No, that was that was an owl bear. An owl bear, a mix mixture of an owl and a bear. Interesting. So sacrifice this guy, and our god is very pleased with us. That should be enough. Take a look at the clock. 25 minutes. I think that's still okay. We can play uh, some more minutes, maybe finish the next level and try to get rid of all these jellies up there. Maybe now that he comes directly into our face, that he comes into our face. Great god. Ouch. <laughs> now that he uh, directly follows us and uh, we will also sacrifice this orc. <laughs> Okay, I'm lucky that no orc came into my face today. Okay. Okay, that was a little lucky. I just uh, attacked this ooze with my with my nice weapon of penetration. I'm glad that I did not hit it. Okay, it's a yellow ooze. It's a different kind of ooze. That's nice. This is a good chance here to improve our piety. You feel inner strength lifting your spirits, that means that we reach already the next piety level. Oh, a ghoul. Of course ghouls are chaotic too, but on the other hand they are... Uh, they are also undeads. And undeads cannot be sacrificed, because they don't have a soul. In comparison to this goblin. I pick up the battle axes because battle axes are very good to sell. Harpy. I always thought harpies were kind of chaotic, but I think I remember that uh, they are not. Did we just kill a quickling? Oh, that was lucky. Quicklings are dangerous enemies. So, but now, descend to the next level. Change our weapon back to a weapon that we can avoid to lose. The saber. Oh, wrong direction. And now, let us continue with this vault. We're down to 37 HP. Weapon corrodes. Didn't climb, hit him. What did they drop? A scroll and a resin. But we do not want to be burned. So let us eat some of the heavier rations that we are carrying. Uh, so, now it's okay. Back to... Uh, oh my god, there's a whole lot of them. And also a ghoul in there. Oh, we're down to 18 HP, that's too low for my taste, so let us use a prayer. The ground did not rumble, which means we've got some more chances. Saber corrodes. To be honest, it's a little too dangerous for me. I would like to close this door and care about that vault later. So nice. Drop the destroyed saber. These jellies are really nasty. I do not want to face them before I... Oh, okay, I have to face them up here too. Let us use the Mithril Broadsword then. Oh man! Have these guys been buffed too? Water, that's cool. Uh, okay, uh, there is no door to close here. Except this one. But something's blocking the door. A scale mail is blocking the door. So we have to pick it up and drop it here. Now there is 
some money within the door. Close it. So. And that's dangerous. But there comes a ghoul. And ghouls have a very nasty paralyzing attack. Which can actually be dangerous. So we fight him in defensive mode. That worked fine. Oh, he picked up that useless saber. Can keep it if he likes. Oh man, I really do not feel too safe without any means of healing except from praying. I'm glad that we have this. Uh, oh, that's a mithril spear, I think. Let's check it. Even adamantium. That's at least very nice to sell. And I think now we explore. Oh, where do you come from? Who opened the door for you? This door is locked. I like to take a look behind. Let's hope there is no trap in this door. That's a bugbear. Let us read the description of the bugbear. So, uh, maybe we will uh, be told what he actually is. The monster of the night parents, the monster of the night parents sneak off in stories. Uh, ah, that's the monster of the night parents sneak off in stories to scare their children. Man sized and covered in matted black hair and with glowing yellow eyes. Its mouth is stretched in a permanent grimace, showing off rows upon rows of bone white sharp teeth and an ever present stream of drool. Bah, what a nasty foe! But luckily, he seems to be not hostile towards us. Tell that to your children. The monster of the night is not hostile at all. I'm wondering where these jellies come from. Did somebody open that door? I now fight them in a rather defensive tactic. Uh, well, to be precise, in uh, neutral tactics, because I do not want to be hit too often by them. Like it. This door is still closed. And it must be the other one. Oh, we reached level 11. That gives us some additional hit points, and even therefore, it is very useful to have it. What do we increase this time? Uh, one more on detect item status and one more on dodge dodge allows us to... Uh, I already told you and one more on find, weaken, find weakness, we do the same again you feel more in touch with the world, nice that means that our mana score just increased, increased by one point I don't know the reason but well more mana is never a bad thing here, this door has been opened that's the reason why we are attacked by all these nasty jellies Anyway, we have managed to close the door, descend to the next level, no special level message, and this is where we will continue in the next episode. I really hope you enjoyed that one. I think it's so much fun to play with these uh, graphical tile sets with uh, and these nice pictures of all these uh, monsters. And for some, it's a real surprise to me to, to finally see how they look, where I had a, a different concept in my head, and then now I see, okay, that's how it was meant. And this. Of course, I, I also like the concept of imagining all this stuff yourself, but, uh, but, but it's uh, very interesting to see how it was intent intentionally meant in the beginning. However, I, I love it a lot, I enjoy this episode very much so far, and I really hope that I will be able to keep Ratatorten alive for a couple more episodes, so he gets a little deeper into the game. At the moment, you see this is damn dangerous, he's always at low hit points, he's got only maybe one prayer left now, so uh, not a lot means of healing and as a dualist he is not able to use missile weapons very effectively and that's a problem. 
with missile weapons. You could uh, hold these uh, enemies away from you and harm them before they can harm you from a distance. Ratatorden Torden has to do it all in melee, which makes it really damn exciting early game. However, I also like to say one more thanks to you because the second episode, well, it got a little less views, but it got 8 likes on the very first day, which is more likes than ever any of my videos got on one single day. That's so great how you support the series so far. I enjoy this a lot. That motivates Rata Torden to do his very best and stay alive and uh, keep up this great support and I'm sure Rata Torden will not let you down. Bye everybody.